New York, and a bunch of other states, and the District of Columbia, which is not a state, but which is its own jurisdiction, um, has filed a lawsuit, or rather many, many lawsuits against TikTok. Um, so, the body of lawsuit, and I, um, I did some research chat into these lawsuits. Here is the basis of what the states are alleging against TikTok. Um, it is actually a mixture of civil offenses and criminal offenses. Um, some states have criminal uh, offenses for the business. Some have civil ones. Um, but they're saying this. Um, the video, the gist is, is that TikTok is deliberately exploitative of underage people in various different ways. California, in particular is trying a criminal suit against them for violating COPA or COPA. I think it's COPA. And COPA is a very old law. I want to say it's from the 1990s that says that you can't process the data, the private information of a person under the age of 13. So the only one of the only privacy laws that we have in the state of the U.S. is um, HIPAA and under the age of 13, and that's COPA. And uh, California is alleging that TikTok has been processing the personal information of under 13 people without parental consent, which is, uh, I think, a crime. It's actually a criminal offense to do that. It can carry a big, big uh, fine and penalty associated. Um, but they variously, the suits kind of allege all the same kind of thing in different ways, but they generally say that. Um, because when you open the app, it just immediately starts playing a video and then you swipe and it just keeps playing and you can do this forever. Um, the autoplay feature and the endless scrolling features are, um, d dopamine center exploiters that are not dissimilar from casinos is what they're saying. Um, they also say that, uh, TikTok uses its notification system to draw people back in and a lot of apps do this where it's like you just get random ass fucking notifications like hey you want to see what this guy posted and it's like no i don't actually how do i turn these notifications off go fuck yourself i don't give a fuck um but to the weaker mind now obviously my mind strong steeled things come at me with with notifications i'm like choo, choo, fuck you notifications off notifications off but the shock mind of the youth they cannot handle it they're flimsy malleable soft easily broken and when the chinese dig their grubby little fingers into their uh their their gray matter they can't help but to comply so the notifications are also alleged to be a um addictive quality to the app that draws their attention even when they're not trying to use tiktok and one uh, argument that I, oh, <clears throat> uh, the parental features they say are weak and easily broken and not effective in practice, which is an interesting point because of something else. Uh, but lastly, they say that the apps use um, a, an exploitative fear of missing out, much like casinos, and the ephemeral content. So they're saying that when they encourage people to post videos that don't last too long, like they only last like an hour or they um, are deleted after the live stream ends or something like that, they say that like that drives kids into thinking, if I don't watch this now, I'm never going to get to see it, so I better like drop what I'm doing and watch this content. And they say that's exploitative. And the um, most interesting part of the legislation is that they compare TikTok to TikTok, but not just any TikTok. China's TikTok. Zhongguo. Douyin. And they compare TikTok to Douyin, and they say um, Douyin has shorter windows for use. Um, like they have sh in the US, the screen limit is 60 minutes under parental control, and in China, it's 40 minutes. Um, they say that in China, the Douyin app's parental controls are way harder to break and are actually effective at limiting screen time. They say that the app um, has a way to turn off autoplay, so it's less engaging, there's more friction, and that if you use the app for too long, it actually has a five second wait time between videos to, to break the habit of just scrolling endlessly. 
because they say that um, that helps create friction and gives people time to think if they want to do something else or the other app will just endlessly suck up your time forever if you let it. So a lot of the app um, hinges on, and I think they even have internal memos that they put into the lawsuit that says TikTok views the American audience as like a bunch of cattle. They call it like a golden cow. You have all these young people with endless free time and nothing to do, and there's no laws preventing TikTok from exploiting them endlessly for cash. So I think that was something that caused um, the regulatory committees to... Uh, raise red flags. They said that they had tried to contact TikTok, like the various states had complained and said, like, your app is too addictive. You need to do things to create more friction so that teens can pry themselves away from the app. And they were all refused. So I think in North Carolina, they said that, that the the Department of Health and Human Services tried to contact them and say, like, you need to do more to help young people on the app. And they're like, no. <laughs> So that's like the totality of all the lawsuits that I had access to um, in summary. That's what they're they're complaining about. Um, and that's it. I hope you found that interesting. I did. I, I, of course, as a person very interested in China, I love hearing little things like that. It makes me laugh. <laughs> Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.